Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Space Mobile is go. FM1 has landed in India. AST Space Mobile signs a 10-year partnership with Saudi Telecom. And Bell Canada announces its Space Mobile pricing. Welcome to our AST Space Mobile October news update. At the end of September, AST Space Mobile announced that FM1 was now ready to ship for launch. And sure enough, on the 12th of October, the satellite and supporting cargo left Midland, Texas, to begin its journey to India. Due to the length of the journey, the plane carrying FM1 had to stop in Alaska and Japan before touching down at Chennai International Airport. The ISRO's chairperson has shared that they are targeting to launch FM1 before the end of 2025, and there have been several reports suggesting that the ISRO is specifically targeting the second week of December. AST Space Mobile stock made new all-time highs in October, and its management team used this opportunity to announce a new $800 million at the market facility on the 7th of the month. This is the largest ATM AST Space Mobile has ever launched, and it will be used to fund the development of its satellite network. We produced a video covering this ATM, so check it out for everything you need to know. Another key piece of news from October was the standardisation of AST Spectrum bands by the 3GPP. The 3GPP, which stands for Third Generation Partnership Project, is a global alliance that sets cellular standards for devices around the world. In order for a phone to be able to use AST's L-band or S-band spectrum, it needs to be adopted by phone manufacturers, and that's exactly what happened in October. This means that future phones will be able to access space-based services using not only the existing bands of spectrum, but also these new bands as well. Looking now to AST Space Mobile's partners, and there was a huge deal announced in October between the company and STC Group. STC, which stands for Saudi Telecom Company, are the largest mobile network provider in Saudi Arabia. The network doesn't just operate in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia though, it also offers services in Jordan, Egypt and Bahrain, among many other countries. AST's service will enable the network to provide coverage across vast deserts, mountainous regions and remote areas that it's otherwise impractical to cover with traditional terrestrial cell phone towers. The deal includes a prepayment of $175 million and a commitment to significant long-term commercial revenue. We expect to see many more deals like this one made by AST Space Mobile in the near future. The STC partnership wasn't the only huge deal AST Space Mobile made in October. It also signed a new definitive agreement with Verizon in the United States. This deal builds on the partnership that the two companies signed in May 2024. This means AST now has access to the customer base of two power players in the US with both AT&T and Verizon on board. But it's not just their customer base AST gains access to. Crucially, these deals also give access to their cellular spectrum too. With this deal, AST now has the ability to use up to 850 MHz of premium multi-operator spectrum in the US, enough to provide outstanding levels of coverage. Earlier in the month, AST's Canadian partner Bell Canada completed a successful test using AST's Block 1 Bluebird satellites. The test included video calling, voice calling, text messaging and data streaming. Bell Canada also confirmed that when space-based services launch they will be included in its top-tier wireless plans. For customers not on those plans, they'll be able to buy these services as an add-on for around $10 to $15 extra per month. Looking at the competition, in October there were rumours that SpaceX is looking to buy out GlobalStar, 
another player in the director device space-based services market. Global Star is currently partnered with Apple and provides the emergency SOS feature that is available on some iPhones. If SpaceX does make a move to purchase Global Star, it would gain access to the company's spectrum and licenses, which could bolster Starlink's position as a rival to AST Space Mobile and a global player in the direct-to-device broadband services market. Sticking with Starlink for our next story, in the UK, the network Virgin Media O2 announced that it had entered into a multi-year partnership with the satellite provider to deliver what's being called O2 Satellite. This service will operate in a similar way to how the deal between Starlink and T-Mobile does in the United States, with Virgin Media O2 using Starlink's network but rebranding it O2 Satellite. O2 Satellite services are set to launch in early 2026 and will rival the services that Vodafone 3 will be providing through their partner AST Space Mobile. Our November news video already looks like it'll be another action-packed one. Here are a few of the items you can expect to see as stories. On the 10th of the month, we've got the AST Space Mobile earnings announcement. This is followed by another Bank of America fireside chat with AST's president and chief strategy officer Scott Vishniertsky. After that, there's Blue Origin's next launch and landing attempt with New Glenn. Plus, before November is over, we're expecting a launch date for FM1 and a shipment date for FM2. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting a team of independent creators by hitting the join button. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to Connected Space.